Okay, so now we're going to connect our previous video on plasma membrane structure to membrane permeability. And the word permeability is basically like how permeable or how easily can molecules or substances cross through a lipid bilayer or a plasma membrane. So this is an updated a video for us here in the year of 2025 since College Board made some changes to Unit 2. So let's go ahead and uh, connect what we previously learned about the hydrophilic, polar, and the nonpolar areas of a membrane and how that influences what may or may not be able to pass through that cell membrane. So when we talk about the plasma membrane, we are going to be focusing on this nonpolar hydrophobic region made of uh, fatty acid tails, right? So those fatty acid tails are a lipid, lipids are nonpolar, here we go. So a common substance that is what exchanged or like crosses through membranes is going to be carbon dioxide. Carbon dioxide is nonpolar. So how do you predict carbon dioxide will enter or exit a cell, right? Because it's nonpolar, it can actually diffuse right on through that nonpolar hydrophobic region of the cell membranes. So nonpolar molecules are able to go right on through the lipid bilayer because they are nonpolar and the fatty acid tails are nonpolar. Now, what about oxygen? Oxygen is another nonpolar gas. Well, just like carbon dioxide, it's able to pass right directly through the fatty acid nonpolar region of a plasma membrane or of a lipid bilayer. Now, when we think about other molecules, we have ions, right? Our cells are surrounded in a sea of ions. So if we use calcium, for example, how do you predict it will enter or leave a cell? Hmm, well, that ion, that charged molecule, is actually repelled by the fatty acid tails. This cannot cross through by simple diffusion is what we would call. When we talk about nonpolar substances, we'll see in our next video on transport about diffusion, uh, but nonpolar molecules can diffuse or pass directly through the membrane, whereas ions and polar molecules are prevented due to those hydrocarbon tails of the fatty acids. So the nonpolar hydrocarbon tails of phospholipids prevent the movement of ions and polar molecules across the membrane. Now what about glucose? A large polar molecule, right? So here I have glucose. Now because of those hydroxyl groups on this, this is a polar molecule and it's kind of large. Can it diffuse right directly through those fatty acid tails, those hydrocarbons that are nonpolar? No. Same with, or similar to calcium, glucose cannot diffuse directly through the membrane. So how do hydrophilic substances, such as large polar molecules and ions, move across the membrane then? If we recall from our membrane structure video, or our plasma membrane video, we know that there's also proteins embedded within the membrane. So there's channel proteins, there's transport proteins, and this is what allows polar substances or ions to pass through the membrane. Now, I do want to add that each type of ion or polar molecule is going to have a protein channel or a transport protein specific to that molecule. So glucose, for example, will go through glucose uh, channels, um, and then calcium will go through calcium channels. So if I had like calcium here, it's not going to go through that glucose transport protein. So each protein channel or transport protein is specific to the molecule that crosses the membrane through it. So hydrophilic substances like polar molecules and ions, large polar molecules, can move through these um, proteins that are embedded within the membrane. So if I look here at a quick little summary, the, if we look at, you can pause the video and quiz yourself and kind of summarize what are, what kind of molecules are A, B, and C. Okay, so A is gonna be an ion, cannot cross the membrane because it's repelled from those hydrocarbon tails of the fatty acids on the phospholipid. Uh, we have C is going to be a large polar molecule, cannot diffuse directly through. And then B is probably some kind of nonpolar molecule that can go right on through those fatty acid tails. Now, if we look here though, water, if we go back all the way to unit one, very first topic of AP Bio, topic 1.1, we learned that water is a polar molecule. 
And here in this picture, we're seeing that water is going directly through those fatty acid tails, right? But I've also mentioned in a few of my cell membrane videos so far and in my protein video that cells are surrounded in water, right? The outside is water, the inside is water. And if we really think about the fluidity of the membrane, the membrane is a fluid mosaic, right? So the phospholipids are moving around. You can bet that if the whole outside is filled with water, the inside's filled with water, there's gonna be some polar molecules that can squeak through. Now that's not the way most water moves into or out of a cell because water is polar, it will be repelled by those fatty acid tails, but a few um, polar small molecules are able to go through that lipid bilayer simply because it is a fluid moving bilayer and a few polar molecules will get through, small ones like ammonia or water, whereas glucose, a large polar molecule, is just too big. That would require a protein channel. Now, the bulk movement of water into or out of a cell, though, because water is polar, is going to be through a specialized protein called an aquaporin. So this protein highlighted here is called an aqua for water. It's like a pore, right? Aquaporin. So small polar uncharged molecules um, may be able to squeeze through in small amounts through the lipid bilayer directly, but they most likely uh, primarily will use a protein channel or transport protein to enter or leave a cell. Okay, and then our last thing to talk about though is cell walls. And so cell walls are not found in all cells. I also want to point out the word cell wall is not interchangeable with the words cell membrane. Cell membrane is referring to the phospholipid bilayer. A cell wall is on the outside of a cell membrane. So a cell wall is like a rigid structure often used for protection and support of that cell. So animal cells do not have cell walls. My, like if I pull on my skin, right? My skin is flexible. My red blood cells can squeeze through capillaries. We are flexible cells. However, a plant, like a tree, does not have a skeleton, right? So to stand upright against gravity, all of that mass and all of that weight, it does have strong, sturdy cell walls. And like bark over time is like dead cell walls and dead cells, like, anyway. So uh, plants will have a sturdy cell wall for structure and support. Fungus also have cell walls, as well as prokaryotes. Bacteria and archaeans also have cell walls on the outside of their cell membranes. So if we continue to talk about permeability though, like here is a prokaryotic cell wall, and then here's a plant cell. Now I can identify the plasma membranes, they're lipid bilayers. Now cell walls are often made of carbohydrates, but a prokaryote cell wall is made of a different material than a plant cell wall. A prokaryote cell wall is made of peptoglycan, and then a plant cell wall is made of cellulose. So in our carbohydrates lesson, we learned that cellulose is um, not digestible, like we can't break those bonds in cellulose. And so when we think about this, uh, we can see the cell walls, they have a bit more space within them, right? So what kind of molecules would be not affected by the presence of cell walls? Right, so small molecules that we would normally expect to enter a cell by diffusion, um, like gases, can go through the plasma membrane of prokaryotes, of plant cells. The cell wall is not really hindering that. Ions, small things. Now, if we're dealing with like larger substances, um, like glucose can still go through protein channels, et cetera, but like a plant cell would be unable to carry out something like endocytosis or exocytosis um, because that cell wall is there. And so um, generally the cell walls are for structure and support and they also really help with osmosis and turgor pressure. So if you think about a plant cell with its like fluid and flexible membrane and if a plant cell fills with water, the cell wall is there to prevent that cell from bursting. So the cell wall does offer some protection and support to cells, um, but it really shouldn't get in the way too much of like a transport, like simple diffusion or facilitated diffusion and small molecules that can just go through the membrane um, because it's like a large structure. But anyway, so that is my summary of membrane permeability and great job.